नमस्कार आप सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आप देख रहे हैं ई विद्या चैनल चैनल नंबर दस आप सभी का स्वागत करती हूँ मैं रेणु भट्ट अपने इस लाइव इंटरक्टिव फोन इन सेशन में और अपने सभी देखने वालों को हम बता दें कि आज के इस सेशन में हम बात करने वाले हैं साइंस के टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इन दिस सेशन इज लाइफ प्रोसेसिस आपको इस पर विस्तार से जानकारी देने के लिए हमारे एक्सपर्ट हमारे साथ जुड़ चुकी हैं तो चलिए उनसे हम परिचय लेते हैं आप हैं मिस स्मृति यादव यू आर टी जी टी साइंस फ्रॉम आर्मी पब्लिक स्कूल सूरागढ़ राजस्थान वेरी वॉम वेलकम मैम नमस्कार और इससे पहले कि हम ये सेशन शुरू करें कुछ ज़रूरी बातें आप सभी के साथ हम शेयर करना चाहेंगे अगर बच्चों आपके मन में कोई भी सवाल आए कोई प्रश्न आए कोई क्वेरी है कुछ पूछना चाहते हैं या इस चैप्टर में कहीं पर आप अटक गए हैं तो आप बेझिझक हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं आप हमें कॉल कर सकते हैं हमारे टेलीफोन नंबर पर जो है डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इधर यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मेल एज वेल हमारा ईमेल एड्रेस है डी टी एच डॉट क्लास टेंथ एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन और हमें पूरी उम्मीद है कि आप अपने सभी क्वेरीज के साथ हमसे ज़रूर जुड़ेंगे और इससे पहले कि हम ये सेशन शुरू करें एक बहुत ज़रूरी सूचना हम आपके साथ शेयर करना चाहते हैं रिगार्डिंग इंडिया जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी We are indeed very proud that India assumed G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023. A nation that deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all. And in doing so, manifests the true spirit of Vasudhaiv Kutumbakam, or we can say the whole world is one family. With that very important piece of information, let's quickly get back to the session. This we have to take care of the life processes. So, ma'am, without any further delay, we want to come to you. We have told our viewers and learners that our topic is our life processes. So, what is special for you today for this session, ma'am? Greetings, everyone. Namaste. I am very happy to be here. 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 Uh, in today's session, we are going to be discussing class 10 science, chapter number 5, life processes. So before diving into the session, I would like to give a brief introduction about life processes. Now what are life processes? Hum broadly cheezo ko do category mein categorize karte hain. That is living things and non-living things. Now if just by seeing something, hum kaise unhe living ya non-living mein differentiate kar sakte hain? See, living things are things which can move which grow and non-living things are things which do not perform these activities. So, we categorize them. But if I tell you examples of plant, they don't move, they don't grow also continuously. You cannot see that growth uh, continuously. And humans also, if they're just sleeping, so can you say that they are non-living? Of course not. They are not non-living. Actually, there are processes which we cannot see through our naked eyes that are known as life processes. In this chapter, in this chapter we are going to be discussing about few of the life processes like digestion, respiration, transpiration, excretion. Now, in this particular session, we will be concerned with the uh, digestion and respiration part. So now before going to uh, digestion uh, part, we all know that we need to work for our body fuel chahiye, energy. Chahiye. Now where do we get this energy from? Food. Now there are two types of uh, mode of nutrition. Now what are these two types of mode of nutrition? Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. As the name suggests, autotrophic. If you break this word in two parts, mein break karenge, auto and trophic. Now, what is the meaning of auto? Auto means on their own and hmm. trophic here means to synthesize something. So, those organisms which can synthesize food on their own are known as autotrophic. And their mode of nutrition is known as autotrophic nutrition. Now, on the other hand, heterotrophic nutrition, if you break down this word hetero and trophic, you will get two words, hetero and trophic. Now, hetero means in some organisms which depend on other organisms for the intake of their food. And trophic means, again, to synthesize something. So, by this we can understand that heterotrophic are those organisms which depend on other organisms for the intake of food. So, if we conclude, what is autotrophic? Autotrophic are those organisms which can make their own food with the help of raw materials provided to them. What are the examples? Uh, plants, green plants hmm. and heterotrophic are those organisms which depend on these autotrophic organisms for the intake of their food. 
Now, what are these examples? As you can see on the screen also, I have given two examples, a cattle and an amoeba. These are what? They are heterotrophic organisms. They can't prepare their own prepare nahi kar sakte. They depend on autotrophic organisms for their food. Now, we will learn a little more about autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. So, the first topic is autotrophic nutrition. Now, as I told you, autotrophic nutrition or autotrophic mode of nutrition, which organisms show? Karte hai? These are plants green plants now what happens in green plants now these green plants they take up inorganic material such as carbon dioxide and utilize it and synthesize organic food by the help of what method photosynthesis you all must have heard about this is word photosynthesis in your earlier classes now agar aap photosynthesis ko bhi break down karenge photo and synthesis mein what is the meaning of photo photo means light and synthesis means to synthesize something so when we are using light to synthesize something that is known as photosynthesis and kaun se organisms photo light use kar sakte hain green plants now you must be having a doubt ki inorganic material or organic material mein kya difference hai see organic material are those materials which you have carbon, oxygen or hydrogen. These three are present present with one another. And your inorganic materials are those materials which in which in these three there will be no one thing present in these three. Like carbon dioxide. What is carbon dioxide? Mein kya hai? Carbon and oxygen. Hydrogen is not present. So that is why plants use these inorganic materials to synthesize organic food with the help of photosynthesis. Now the next question arises, ki kaha hota hai photosynthesis? How is this process of photosynthesis carried out? Now to carry out photosynthesis, we require four basic material. Kya hai four basic or raw material? Aapka carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. Now carbon dioxide is taken through the air. Now carbon dioxide hum kaise lete hai? Carbon dioxide is taken through minute pores which are present on the leaf of the plant. As we all know that the photosynthesis process is carried out on the leaves of the green plants. Now carbon dioxide is taken through the stomata. Now we, I'll tell you more about stomata in the coming session. After that we have water. Now how is water taken? Water is taken up from the roots. It reaches the leaves. Sunlight. Sunlight is also absorbed by the leaf with uh, what help? It is taken by the help of chlorophyll. Now, chlorophyll is the green color pigment which is present in the leaf, which helps in the absorption of sunlight. Now, ye sari cheese jab ek saath plant mein present hote hai, then your photosynthesis process is carried out. Now, what happens? How is this process of photosynthesis carried out? Aapka sabse pehle kya hota hai? Sunlight absorb kiya, carbon dioxide liya, water aya and chlorophyll is already present. So the chlorophyll will absorb the light. It will break down this light energy into chemical energy. Okay. Now in the next process, humare paas carbon dioxide pehle se tha, humare paas water bhi tha. Now the water will get broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. Now this hydrogen will go and get attached to your carbon dioxide to form what carbohydrate or hum bol sakte simple sugars form ho jayenge so now this carbohydrate it has your carbon also it has your hydrogen also it has your oxygen also so the organic material organic food material is made this is known as photosynthesis. Now what happens if ye to product banana, what is the byproduct which is given out in photosynthesis? That is your oxygen. We all know that plants are the major source of oxygen on this planet Earth. Agar main aapko summarize karao ye sare photosynthesis ke steps ko. So there are four steps, major four steps. The first step is absorption of light by chlorophyll. Now what are chlorophyll? They are green color pigment which are present in your leaf. Next, the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. How it happens? Because of the presence of your chlorophyll. Next is, aapne water absorb kiya plant ne. Now this water gets split down into hydrogen and oxygen. And then finally, this hydrogen is get attached to your carbon dioxide to form sugars. You all must have read about oxidation and reduction reaction. We have hai. Now, when carbon dioxide is attached with an hydrogen, or when hydrogen is attached, what is the reaction we reaction bolte hai? Reduction reaction. Now, here I have given an equation also which you can go through. That is carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sun, uh, sunlight and chlorophyll gives what? Sugars water and oxygen is given out. I hope autotrophic nutrition is clear. Photosynthesis is also clear.
as i told you stomata now here you can see that there are two diagrams of stomata now what are stomata stomata are very small opening which are present on the leaves which help in the gaseous exchange of the uh, leaf now stomata here you can see ki stomata ka do diagrams hai first is the open stomata and the second one is closed stomata now when the stomata is open it can uh, take up the carbon dioxide and release oxygen and when this process is done that is at the night time the stomata is closed now the stomata is guarded by the guard cell now what is the function of these guard cell guard cell help in the opening and closing of the stomata as you can see in the guard cells there are small green color dots are present now what are these green color dots these are your chlorophyll only chloroplast in which chlorophyll is present now next mode of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition we have discussed about autotrophic and the next one is heterotrophic nutrition now in heterotrophic nutrition as i told you that the organisms are unable to synthesize their own food so what do they do they depend on other organisms for the intake of food now there are three broad categories of heterotrophic nutrition now what are these three broad categories of heterotrophic nutrition first one is holozoic nutrition second is saprophytic nutrition and the third one is parasitic nutrition now holozoic nutrition is run by a uh, human beings means amoeba now what happens in holozoic nutrition the organisms in take intakes or whole food wo pura ka pura food intake karte hain and then the process of digestion takes place the food is broken down and then it is given into the body uh, to make to get energy so what is the example of holozoic nutrition amoeba human beings and then we have saprophytic nutrition what is saprophytic nutrition i hope you must you all have read this in your uh, lower classes saprophytic nutrition are those organisms which feed on dead and decaying organisms or material now when i said dead and decaying material aap sabke mann mein example to aa hi gaya hoga now what is this example that is fungi the fungi usually grows on dead and decaying material you all must have seen jo old log hota hai aapka wood ka log which is uh, damp and dirty uske upar aapka fungi grow karta hai now where does it take its nutrition from this dead and decaying matter now the third one is parasitic nutrition now what is parasitic nutrition now, these organisms ye thoda sa different hote hain aapke saprotrophic se saprotrophic were feeding on dead and decaying matter these parasitic nutrition they feed on a living host now why do we call it as a living host as you can see the third picture it's an example it's a cuscata we also known it is also known as amar bay now what happens here is jo aapka parasitic nutrition ya jo iske examples hain ye jo organisms hain ye kya karte hain ye living host ke upar aake rehne lagte hain and they take up nutrition from the living host without hurting the organism host is also living jo aapka the organism is also living iska example best example hai amar bay aur cuscata okay now you are, must i hope you must have understood heterotrophic nutrition तीन टाइप के हैं होलोजोइक न्यूट्रिशन सेपरोफाइटिक न्यूट्रिशन एंड पैरासाइटिक न्यूट्रिशन सो हियर वी हैव कम टू एंड अबाउट द न्यूट्रिशन पार्ट ऑफ प्लांट्स आई होप नो आई होप आपको समझ में आया दैट देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन ऑटोट्रॉफिक एंड हेटोरोट्रॉपिक ऑटोट्रॉपिक द वंस व्हिच कैन मेक देयर ओन फूड विद द हेल्प ऑफ सनलाइट नो आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन कि सिर्फ सनलाइट के हेल्प से ही क्या ऑटोट्रॉप्स uh, अपना फूड प्रिपेयर कर सकते हैं और इज देयर एनी अदर वे बाय विच वी कैन दे कैन प्रिपेयर देयर ओन फूड इफ यू नो द आंसर प्लीज डू लेट अस नो एंड हेटोरोट्रॉफिक न्यूट्रिशन सेकेंड मंथ था एंड नाउ व्हाट इज हेटोरोट्रॉफिक न्यूट्रिशन ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच कैन नॉट मेक देयर ओन फूड दिस इज दे डिपेंड ऑन अदर ऑर्गेनिजम्स और वी कैन से दैट दे डिपेंड ऑन ऑटोट्रॉफिक Uh, organisms to uh, give them or to provide with them them with their food now next we are going to move on nutrition in human beings now we have finished with the part of plants next is human beings now this diagram which i have given here you all must have seen this diagram in your lower classes now let's just summarize is this now digestion in human being is is carried out in the alimentary canal or it is also known as digestive tract now why this is known as digestive tract because the food travels travels in uh, the food travels from one point to the other point that is that is why it is known as a tract now the first part where the food enters to your mouth out is known as buccal cavity or it is also known as mouth the buccal cavity has teeth and tongue next your food travels from your buccal cavity to the 
oesophagus after that the food travels to your stomach then to your small intestine large intestine and at the end it is excreted from your anus now additional to that at uh, some glands are also present in the digestive tract that is from starting from the mouth that is salivary gland is present then you have your liver gall bladder other bile duct pancreas these all all help in giving different types of juices and enzymes which helps in the proper digestion of your food now we'll carefully look we'll go deep into the digestion of human beings okay now the mechanism of digestion of food so what happens we take food through our mouth yes now the food is taken in through our mouth our mouth has teeth our mouth has tongue it has salivary glands and now the food is chewed inside the mouth it is made into a paste it is mixed with the saliva and then it is passed down on to your oesophagus now before it is present in your mouth when we consume the food certain enzymes are mixed with your food now what are these enzymes what do you mean by enzyme enzyme are known as biological catalyst now what are biological catalyst see enzymes they help in increasing the speed of a reaction or we can say that they help in performing in the reaction or the process okay so i told you that in the mouth we have salivary glands now these salivary glands they secrete an enzyme which is known as salivary enzyme okay now when we consume food the food is broken down into simpler substances now here in the mouth the digestion of starch take place listen very carefully keep this in mind that the digestion of starch takes place where it starts in your mouth and with, with what with the help of salivary amylase the digestion of starch takes place with the help of salivary amylase salivary amylase breaks down your starch into uh, carbohydrate into starch next is your food with the help of your oesophagus moves to your stomach now how does the move how does the food moves moves from your oesophagus to the stomach as we all know that the oesophagus or we call it as food pipe is made up of of muscles now we all know how do muscles work with the by the mechanism of contraction and relaxation contraction and relaxation okay it continues in a rhythmic manner so the food which moves in a rhythmic manner by contraction and relaxation contraction and relaxation and the food is pushed down into your stomach now this process is known as the contraction and relaxation uh, which is happening in the oesophagus is known as peristalsis now your food has reached its next destination that is your stomach now inside the stomach as soon as the food reaches the stomach inner lining secretes hcl hydrochloric acid now you may wonder why do we why do our stomach needs hydrochloric acid now the stomach needs hydrochloric acid there are two important functions first as we consume food the food has a lot of bacteria and germs on it so the hydrochloric acid helps to kill those bacteria and germ and the second most important function is that the hcl helps in the activation of certain enzymes which are present in your stomach now one of these enzyme is pepsin now what is pepsin pepsin helps in the digestion of protein now see i told you that the digestion of carbohydrate begins in your mouth and the digestion of protein starts in the stomach now how does the protein is digested with the help of pepsin the digestion of protein starts in your stomach with the help of pepsin pepsin is an enzyme which is present in inactivated form in the stomach the moment the food enters hcl is secreted it gets activated now since the food has entered your small uh, stomach it gets uh, the protein gets digested after that what happens now the stomach uh, the food will move to your next destination that is small intestine now small intestine is known as the place where the complete digestion of the food takes place now as you can see on the uh, slide i have written that the small intestine in is larger in herbivores or compared to in carnivores now why it is larger in herbivores and why it is smaller in carnivores as we all know that herbivores consume green plants a green plants they have a carbohydrate which is known as cellulose now cellulose is a little difficult to digest so that is why these herbivores need a larger uh, small intestine so that the cellulose digestion can take place properly and we carnivores and the carnivores do not consume so much of cellulose was that we need a large intestine now 
the food has reached your sm small intestine here the complete digestion of carbohydrate protein and fat takes place now in small intestine i told as i have earlier mentioned that we have few glands that is pancreas liver bile duct what do they do they secrete different juices now pancreas secrete pancreatic juices it also secretes an enzyme known as trypsin which helps in the digestion of protein complete digestion of protein okay now the pan, uh, pancreas uh, secrete pancreatic juices and trypsin your liver secretes bile juice now this bile juice is not directly uh, secreted into your small intestine it is first stored in the bile duct and then the bile duct secretes the bile juice whenever it is required in the small intestine it helps in the digestion of fat now what is happening the complete digestion of of your all the food nutrition is taken part in your small intestine now the small intestine has small finger like projection which is known as a villi now what are these villi they are finger like projection and they have a blood vessels at their ending so when the food is digested it is broken down into simpler substances it is now ready to be absorbed by the blood vessels now as we all know that the blood is known as connective tissue you have studied in 9th standard that blood is present from your head to to so whatever wherever this nutrition is required wherever the requirement of this nutrition is there the food will reach through the blood from wherever the nutrition is required now the food is absorbed the nutrition are absorbed now the unabsorbed food is not transferred to the large intestine the last part of your digestion now mm -hmm. what happens in the large intestine since our body does not give out any useful product so what happens in this uh, large intestine again reabsorption happens a reabsorption of some salt reabsorption of some water so that nothing goes waste only the undigested food not which is not useful to our body is expelled out from our body through the help of anus and this process is known as excretion now i hope you have understood the whole process of digestion which starts from your mouth and ends in your anus now but now going to the next topic i would like to tell you that see we have digested the food the food has reached each to all the parts wherever the targeted site wherever it is required now i told you in the beginning of the session that we require food because we need energy yes now when since we have digested the food the food has reached to all the parts of the body now how do we get this energy from the food now here comes your next process that is known as respiration now what happens in respiration that the food which we have consumed the nutrients which we have consumed it gets broken down on to release energy now this release of energy or the breaking down of food happens and in two ways now what are these two ways one is in the presence of oxygen and the other one is in the absence of oxygen now let's first discuss about the absence of oxygen we we'll better understand with this diagram and see the glucose we'll take a example we'll take the example of glucose now what happens we consume glucose the glucose is reached to our our targeted site uh, that is cell we all know that cell is the fundamental unit it of our uh, uh, life okay which perform different types of functions so the glucose has reached in the cell in the cytoplasm it is converted into pyruvate okay now in in the cytoplasm if absence of oxygen is there as you can see in the first part of the diagram in the in this uh, diagram in this flow chart you can see that the absence of oxygen an example of is yeast now what happens in the ox absence of oxygen this pyruvate is converted into ethanol uh, along with the energy okay now ethanol is made and energy is given out now where does it takes place it takes place in the yeast since this is happening in the absence of oxygen this respiration or this type of respiration is known as anaerobic respiration what is this known as this is known as anaerobic respiration now coming back to humans now in humans as we take up oxygen so oxygen is present so the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate and then the breakdown of pyruvate in presence of oxygen now you can see that it is mentioned where does this breakdown of uh, pyruvate takes place it takes place in the mitochondria where is mitochondria present mitochondria is a type of cell organelle which is present in your cytoplasm only now this mitochondria inside the mitochondria this pyruvate is broken down into carbon dioxide 
uh, H2O and your energy. This carbon dioxide is given out, out through exhalation from our body. Water and energy is utilized. Now, this process, this type of respiration, where the spirovate is broken down in presence of oxygen is known as aerobic respiration. Now, aerobic respiration gives much more energy if you compare it with the anaerobic respiration. Okay. Now, since the energy is made, now this energy will be converted into ATP. Now, what is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. This ATP is used by our cell to carry out different types of, of life processes or different types of functions which the cell is supposed to carry out. Now, you must be seeing that a, uh, in the middle, a row is there where it is written lack of oxygen. Now, what is lack of oxygen? Sometimes when we work out and when we do intense exercise, so what happens? ज्यादा ऑक्सीजन की जरूरत होती है अब ना ऑक्सीजन तो हमारे पास उतना ही आ रहा है बॉडी के पास है ना बट हमारी बॉडी को ज्यादा ऑक्सीजन चाहिए ज्यादा एनर्जी चाहिए सो नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस दिस मोर एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट इज फुलफिल्ड इन द ब्रेक is fulfilled how with the breakdown of this glucose in the absence of oxygen okay now why there is an absence of oxygen because we are doing more rigorous exercise so we don't get the supply of oxygen in our cells as much as required hai. so now the pyruvate will break down, break down into lack of oxygen that is now what will be the product form lactic acid will be formed along with the energy now this lactic acid it gets accumulated in your muscles Sometimes you must have felt that when you have rigorous exercise, your muscles mein pain start to start. You get hmm. cramps in your muscles, your muscles get sore. Now, what is the reason? That you have done exercise, ki, lack of oxygen, ki se, energy, your body needs exercise. Karne ke liye. So, when this energy is given out in the, presence, in the absence of oxygen, what will form? Ho jata hai? Lactic acid. So, if you take a hot shower, Ma'am, here let me sa. tell you that we have only three more minutes left for this session, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll just wind up. Ki, aap to hot shower lenge, so aapke body ko relax feel hoga. So before ending this session, I have few questions for you which you can answer in the comment section. The first question is, where does the digestion of starch begin in human body? I have told this in this session only. I hope everyone is able to answer. And the second question is, why do herbivores have longer small intestine than carnivores? I want you all to answer these questions. I hope everyone has understood this session. Thank you. Thank you so very much, ma'am. And here I would like to ask you a question. Uh, can you please explain us a more example of parasitic uh, nutrition, ma'am? Can you okay. please share yeah. us? Yes. See, parasitic nutrition is what? When the organism is depending on another organism, it is a heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The organism is depending upon another organism that is living. So, I have given one example that is Amarbel. The other example would be lice which are present on human body or mosquitoes. When are mosquitoes also, they are parasite. They come on human hmm. blood and then they go. Okay. And ma'am, can you please tell us various factors that affects uh, photosynthesis? Yes, ma'am. The various factors which be affecting the photosynthesis is first sunlight. If there is no sunlight, then the photosynthesis process will be affected. Hmm. If the wind is more, if the temperature is more, or uh, these are the factors, the availability of water is not there. And if the plant is dying, all these factors will affect the process of photosynthesis. And then what kind of respiration uh, gives us which more energy is released, ma'am? In which? Uh, see, there are two types of respiration. Hmm. First is your aerobic respiration and the second one is your anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration means in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration means in the absence of oxygen. So, presence of oxygen gives us more amount of energy when you compare it to the anaerobic respiration. Okay. So, ma'am, it's time for me to wrap up this session. But before that, thank you so very much, ma'am, ki aap humse jude aur aapne itne detailed tarike se, itne achhe tarike se, hamai sabhi students ko is topic pe itne achhe jaan kari di. Thank you so very much, ma'am, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. And before I wrap up this session, let me share a very important piece of information with you all regarding NCERT textbooks. NCERT textbooks for the year 2023-24 are available throughout the country and these textbooks may be purchased directly from NCERT sales counters located at New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Kolkata and Guwahati. These sales counters will be functional on all the weekdays including all the gadgeted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays as well from 9.30 am to 6 pm. 
You may also place order online for all the books. You have to go to our website that is ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in and all these books will be delivered at your doorsteps with no delivery fees. And in case if you want a soft copy of all those books in PDF version, it can also be downloaded online for free from NCERT, Diksha, e Shala website and from our mobile app as well. We would request you to visit our uh, website that is ncert.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendors. Isi ke saath main Renu Bhatt le leti hu aap sabhi se ijazat lekin jane se pehle aapko bata du ki ek chote se break pe ja rahe hain. Break ke baad apne ek aur live interactive phone in session ke saath hazir honge jo ki Hindi ke 10th kaksha ke vidyarthiyon ke liye hai aur aaj aapko padon ke bare mein jankari di jayegi yani ki meerat ke pad aapko padhaye jayenge. Mujhe filhal Renu Bhatt ko dijiye ijazat. Namaskar.